In this Webflow tutorial, I'll teach you how to optimize images for file size as well as for SEO. Here's the situation. You have your website and you have a bunch of photos that you really, really like. Either you took them from a stock photo website such as Unsplash or Adobe Stock Images, or maybe you've gone out and shot them yourselves in your own iPhone, or maybe you've even hired a photographer to take these photos. So one thing to make sure of is file resolution size. So for example, I'm on Unsplash right now, and if I download this specific image right here, as you can see, it's on my desktop, and I put it into a design software. In my case, I'm using Sketch, but you can use any other software you like, such as Figma, Photoshop, Canva, anything really. You'll, just, you'll notice that the image that I've downloaded is 4,000 by 6,000 pixels. So really, this is the raw image that the photographer took. Maybe they edited it in Photoshop, etc. But usually when someone sends you a file, either a photographer or a stock photo, it's usually in a very, very large resolution. And it just doesn't need to be this large in resolution unless it's very, very, very specific reasons. For example, maybe you're doing a photography website and, and you have a zoom in feature where you have to zoom into the image. So really I'd recommend the images to never be more than 1920 by 1080. That is the biggest resolution I'll recommend simply because images are usually never this big. But of course, take this with a grain of salt. If your specific website has a very niche, say you have a massive image throughout your whole page and it takes up the, literally the whole screen, then maybe you want to create it just a bit bigger. But in general, I never go over 1920 by 1080. And you would also notice if you go on websites, for example, if I go back to my Webflow, just a dummy project right here, you'll notice that, for example, in this hero image, you can just visually see in your eye that this image doesn't need to be 6,000 by 8,000 pixels. I'm on a MacBook Pro 13 inch. Maybe you're on an iMac 1920 by 1080 pixels. You can just see that this image is never going to need to be that big. So just always make the file size, the file resolution very, very small, and this will make a huge difference. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by this. So let's go ahead and go into Webflow and let's go ahead and go into the asset panel by clicking J or clicking this button right here. And you'll notice that the image I downloaded in Unsplash. If I just drag this in straight away, you would automatically just notice that Webflow doesn't even allow images more than four megabytes because of SEO reasons and, and page load reasons. So what could you do in this situation? You could go into a website such as Compressed JPG. Let's go ahead and do that. We can slap this on. You can see that the, the image is 4.7 megabytes, but after I compress this, it's probably going to be very, very similar size because the people who uploaded in Unsplash were very smart and compressed the images. So let's find out. So once it's loaded, it's actually cut 43%. So now I can actually hit download and I can go back to Webflow and just re-upload this image. And now it lets me add it because it's reduced it less than four megabytes. So let's go ahead and click on to the gear icon once it's finished uploading. And you can already tell it's very, very slow. So once that's done, we can go ahead and click on to this gear icon on the top right. And you'll notice that it's keeping the exact same resolution, 4,000 by 6,000, as I mentioned earlier. I think this is absurd. But you'll notice that the megabyte has been reduced from 4.8 megabytes to 2.67. But Webflow is still telling you that it's very, very large. So this is obviously going to affect page load speed. So what can we do about it? So what I strongly recommend again is if we actually just upload a different resolution. In this case, I reduced it to 720 by 1080 pixels. Hit export, hit JPEG and export it as a JPEG. And now if we actually upload this into Webflow once again, you'll notice that if I hit, hit this gear icon, it's now reduced it to less than one megabyte, but yet it's still very large. So what can we do about this now? So what we can do is we can go ahead and click onto this button right here that says expand asset panel. And we can go ahead and tick this specific image and we can go ahead and tick multiple images if you would like. So for example, let's just say this, uh, this image is 309 KB. This one is 172. Let's go ahead and tick these two as well. Then we can hit compress right here and hit compress again. And Webflow has this inbuilt feature where it can actually compress images 
into a format known as WebP, which is the gold standard of image file sizes. WebP is the most compressed version of images without losing any quality, depending on the resolution. So as you can see now, if I hit the gear icon, this image is now 119 KB. So we've reduced it so much from the original size. And let's look at the other two images. This has been reduced to 9.9 KB from, I think it was 100. And this one has been reduced to 43 KB from, I believe it was around 300 KB. So you can see this is significantly reducing the image size as well as increasing page load speed. So you might be questioning yourself like, oh, but what about the quality? You know, can people see the difference? Let's go ahead and just put the quality side by side. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just add the image right here and call it image test and give this a width of 100% and leave the height as auto. We'll go ahead and choose our image that we compressed to, I think it was two megabytes or four megabytes. And then below that, I'm gonna hit control C, command V. Below that, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this image to the one that we compressed significantly into WebP format. Now I'm gonna go ahead and publish the site and I'm gonna go ahead and view it and show you exactly how they both look identical to the human eye. So let's scroll all the way down. This is the first image where it's about two megabytes. As you can see, it's very, very crisp, very, very sharp. And if I actually scroll down this image here, maybe it's slightly reduced in crisp and quality, but it's essentially indistinguishable from the human eye. And just keep in mind as well, depending on the situation, because now that I look at it, this is actually a lot better quality than this. I can, I can just tell. In most cases, and again, this is very unique to the section that you have, you won't have an image this big that takes up the whole screen, as I tried to allude to earlier. Really, these images will be placed in a very small box similar to this, where it would have a width of 100% and a fixed height of, let's just say, 480 pixels. And now if I replace this image with the high resolution one, and I'll just copy this exact same content, and I'll replace the bottom one with that low resolution WebP, and I hit publish. Let's take a look at the difference now. So let me go ahead and refresh the page. And what you'll notice at the very top, the top one is that very, very high resolution, um, high megabyte, very large file size. And the bottom one is a significantly low resolution and a compressed WebP image. And from this specific scenario, you can tell that there is absolutely no difference towards the human eye. So this is the power of making sure that you reduce the resolution size as well as compressing it to WebP. Uh, let me go over a couple of other things. Whenever you upload an image to Webflow, you also wanna make sure you click onto the gear icon. And from here, you can actually add SEO settings um, specifically for screen readers. So a lot of people who visit the web, web in general, um, some of them are visually impaired. So they rely on screen readers where it literally dictates by voice what that specific image is. Or if the image doesn't load, sometimes it just has a text called alt text. And this is exactly how we add it. So right here in this descriptive field, we can go ahead and add a text that describes the image, which again benefits SEO specifically for screen readers and in case the image doesn't load. So we can go ahead and just give it something like forest uh, road uh, with forest background. So that's it. And you'll be also interested to note that there's another button called decorative. And usually decorative is for images that don't convey any meaning. For example, like a cross, like a pop-up with a cross or just um, patterns or symbols that doesn't really mean anything. So just leave it to descriptive if it's a descriptive image. Otherwise, if it's like an icon or symbol, you can potentially use decorative. So make sure you do that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you want more Webflow videos and design videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. I'll be releasing new videos every week and I'll see you guys there.